Hi guys, William K here. So today what we're going to do is to play an arpeggio with the best free guitar PST plugin available on the market right now. So check it out. Right, so it's a simple chord progression with a D minor, an A sharp major, an F major, and an A major. So I added no third party effects or whatsoever, so it's the natural sounds of the plugin you are hearing. Okay, so in this video, we are going to learn how to play that song, and I'll give you some tips and tricks as well to make your creations sound better. <laughs> so I'm going to insert a new MIDI track. And then I'm going to load ATML2 into it, like this. I'm going to close that and insert a new MIDI clip. And we're going to operate on four measures, okay? And also make sure the tempo is set at 120 BPM. Okay, so the first thing we are going to do is to draw the root notes of the chord progression. So let's go with a D2, okay, beat number two will go with an A sharp one, then an F one, and an A one. And we're gonna extend the notes value so they all last one measure. Okay, right after that, what we can do is move up there and start drawing the pattern. So we'll need a D3 on position 1.2 and after that an A2, just like this. Then on position 1.3 or third beat of the measure, we'll go with an E3, which is the second note on the D minor scale. And right after an F3 and a D3 again. So for those who are familiar with music theory, those are double eighth notes or quavers as they call it in the UK. So what we just did will add speed to the pattern and the double eighth notes will highlight the suspended second of the D minor, which is the E3. And that will be the epicenter of the song. Okay, so let's continue. So on position 1.4 or the fourth bit of the measure, we'll go with an A2 and after that, a C3. So the C3 is actually the seventh note on the D minor scale, and that will add a lot of sweetness to the song. So here's how it sounds. So let's extend the notes value so it sounds less robotic. But before we do that, we need to ask ourselves what would happen in the real world. On a real guitar, you can't make two notes ring simultaneously if they are placed on the same string. Otherwise, we can let the notes ring as long as we want. Okay, so coming back to the MIDI clip and taking the two highest notes over there, the E3 and the F3. So those two notes are played on the first string. So we can't let the E3 ring if we play the F3. That won't be realistic. So what we're going to do is extend the F3 note until measure number two, because we are not playing any notes on the first string until there. And after those three notes are played on the second string, so we can extend the first D3 until the second half of the third beat, and the second D3 until the second half of the fourth beat. And the C3 will ring until the end of the measure. After that, we got those two A2 notes, so it will be easy this time. We just have to extend them this way, and it should sound just like this. Now, before going to the A sharp major, 
we need to ask ourselves once more, is it possible when switching chords to let the notes of the previous chord ring? Well, sometimes yes, sometimes no. It depends if the switch requires a complex movement with the fingers. And in our case, from a D minor 7 to an A sharp major, it is just impossible to let any notes ring. So what we can do is select everything we have here and move everything down one, two, three, and four. Then we modify the position of the C sharp three note to a D three. And concerning the seventh note over there, we'd rather have a suspended fourth, which is a C three. It will sound much sweeter. Okay, so because we are going up in intensity, what we can do is to add a little A sharp 2 at the end of the measure. So it would be like if the guitarist was plucking two strings at the same time. And that would be just great. After that, we can move to the F major. So we select everything again and duplicate. But this time we move everything down 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So we said that we are going up in intensity. So what we can do is to add an A2 and a C3 at the very start of measure number 3 and extend them as much as we can. Just like this. And that will sound super cool. Okay, now let's move to the A major. So what we can do is just copy paste what we did with the A sharp major and move everything down just once. Then to add more intensity, we can go with an A2 at the very beginning of the measure and a C sharp 3. And we can extend them as much as we can. At the very end of the measure, we are already plucking two strings. What we can do is pluck three. So it will add even more power. So let's add a last C sharp three and it should sound just the best. Okay, now let's work on the velocities. So we have three different levels of velocity. The first one for the root notes, the second one for the high notes, and the third one for all the notes we play when we pluck several strings at the same time. So let's go. So let's select all the root notes and bring them to a velocity at around 80, 78, 81, doesn't matter. Now for all the other notes, we'll bring them to a velocity of say 70, 71, doesn't matter. Then for the notes that we play when we pluck several strings at the same time, which are there, there, and there, we can bring their velocity down to 60 and it will sound much better. Okay, so let's continue. So let's bring the number of measures up to 20 and let's duplicate what we did. So at measure number four, the drums will start. So we can repeat the same pattern as such, but then if we duplicate again, we'll actually do something quite bad. So here, the intensity will go up and up, and suddenly we'll shut it down because we will play only one note. So what we can do is zoom in and draw an A2 and a, C, a D3 and extend them as much as we can, just like this and we need to bring their velocities down to 60. 
The same thing with the A sharp major. We can draw an F2 and an A sharp 2. Extend them as much as we can and bring their velocity down to 60. And then we can start duplicating at will. And last but not least, we can go back to the plugin and we can activate the double mode, which will give us a little stereo effect. Then in the FX section, you can activate the EQ over there, bring the band one gain a little bit up until almost the maximum, and then the second band gain a little bit down, just like this. And that will sound the best. And that's all for today. So I hope you found this tutorial clear and concise. And if you have any questions, just leave a comment below. You can also like the video and subscribe to the channel because a lot more is on the way.